Hey, welcome to the team. In this video series, I'm going to show you our process for setting up projects inside of Premiere. Let's get started. First things first, let's head over to Premiere Pro. Here we're going to create a new project. In this new project, we are going to first find a place for it. Everyone's going to be a little bit different. I will link a video for you to see how we actually set up our hard drives here for maximum performance from your computer. So let's go to this project here and choose a new location. So normally what we do, I like to number them. Them, like that whatever our mostly freaking projects are are always on top I think it makes it easier because Benny's blonde beach we have file location then project name it's gonna be Benny's brunch version one you always do this in the end of actually call it Benny's brunch create now that we're inside of this folder we're gonna set up a couple other folders so the first one is gonna be our media folder and then our sequence our sequences and our last one is going to be assets. For media, here you're going to add whatever the different folders that we're working with or the different cameras. So for this project here, it's going to be the Sony A7S 3 and the drill. So I'm going to come in here, new bin. I'm going to put Sony A7S 3 then drone DJI. I'm going to import the footage. And you also want to make sure to check that it's under not use order, but well, let's go by name. This way it's all going to go in order from when it was shot all the way down. Let's move over to drone, to import. And then for free game quick selections, you can hit the first one and then shift in the last clip and that will select everything in between there. Open that. Perfect. Now, depending on how strong your computer is, you might be able to go ahead and start editing these folders. Since we are sharing this with our external team, the next step for me would be to actually commit and create proxies for this job. I'm going to right click, create proxies so pros pro res right next to the media folder okay now this is going to launch adobe media encoder and start creating the jobs for these proxies while it's creating these jobs uh you know i want to give it some time for it to load all of them and then i will go ahead and create the other proxy jobs for the drone footage as well all right so let's go back into our project folders drone i'm going to select all I'm going to go and create proxies. Okay. Perfect. So now media encoder is going to be setting up the proxies for us. This is not necessary for every single project, but as I mentioned, for the purposes of this training video, and since we're going to be sending this to remote editors, creating the proxies allows us to have an easier workflow. So next, now that we're having this proxies created, we're going to hop over to our sequences. So for sequences, we're going to do two things. First one, we're going to do new bin. We're going to call these selects and another bin called drafts. Inside of drafts, we'll do a version one and a version two. Now, if you have additional versions, just create a new folder for each version. So now that we're going to select, we're going to create a new sequence. And this sequence is going to be called a Benny 7s3 selects. So the one is going to be called drone selects. Perfect. So then while we're waiting for the footage to actually create proxies, I'll just show you the example of what you actually will be doing. So let's click over back to media. Now that we have our clips here, how this would work out is that you would come in, you look through the footage. and find in and out points. So we have their five second clip. You were usually looking for clips between five to 10 seconds long. Um, sometimes it will be shorter, but that's normally the one that we're playing with. So from here you can use um, comma and that will add it automatically to the timeline. Take your time to go over to keyboard shortcuts. This will immensely help you become a faster editor. So that's there. And the same thing as you see this, this is kind of a good starting point. And I cut here and then now the camera comes back. So I'll start a new, I hit I. Oh, then you saw there were kind of shakes. I want to stop the clip there. Oh, so this was three seconds long. We add that to the playlist. Perfect. Next, next clip here from the headphones. Hear them. 
Then, of course, you can always adjust this. This is going to help with the, the playback. So right now we have 1A. Okay, so, you know, as you heard here, I was waiting for the lady to walk past. So you always be paying attention to the background of the video to see what's happening. And we're going to have to take like two steps back and then we're going to walk into the frame. And action. Perfect. So there, oh, that was a good clip. It's longer than 10 seconds, but that's fine. That was, that's what the shot was for. So beginning to end, you're going to hit I. We're adding that to the beginning. Next clip. All right, ready? One second. Three, two, one, action. And then I want to move right before action here. Point to the sign again. Perfect. One thing to make sure is that when you're adding here, what I just noticed is that my uh, playhead is all the way to the beginning. So in this situation, if I hit the comma to drop, it would move everything forward. So you want to make sure that when you're doing this is that your playhead is on the last clip. And you could use the up and down arrow keys on the keyboard to adjust to jump to the next clip. So now that we're here, I'm going to hit comma and I'm going to add that clip here. Moving on to the next one. Action. A little bit slower on your walk. There you go, point to the sign. Perfect, there's good. I'm gonna hit O, come back to the plane ahead here, hit comma, and we have our next clip. Now, depending on the size of uh, the sequence and the clip, sometimes you will have the situations that you're adding a clip that is 4K and this would be cropped in. To re-ensure that, you're going to make sure that you're going to right-click your clip, set to frame. You saw the big difference there. So the big thing to know is that you want to make sure that you're doing set to frame and not scale to frame. Scale, scale to frame will actually make the clip uh, lose its resolution versus set to frame will actually expand it to its full length. So you want to go ahead and complete this process through all the clips on the timeline.